1 million gladiators tune in to watch my next guest get hot and steamy with a one and only Olivia Pope. And if you don't know what I mean by gladiator, you're missing out on one of TV's biggest shows. Please welcome Scandal star Tony Goldwyn. <laughs> driving them crazy. <laughs> so explain this to me. You play President Fitzgerald Grant. Mm -hmm, that's He's a right. liar, an adulterer, mm -hmm. a murderer. Right. Women cannot get enough of him. What is that about? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I guess women like the, the dark boys? side, bad yeah. boys. <laughs> the truth is, uh, as flawed as he is, yeah. He's a guy who really comes from his heart in pretty much everything he does, and that gets him into a lot of trouble. Yes. But all the characters on Scandal are, everyone's kind of bad, which is, which is what makes which the show makes so, so good. good. Exactly. Yeah. Now, we mentioned that you have these steamy love scenes with Carrie Washington, mm -hmm. but she also has love scenes with Scott Foley. Yes. And I heard that you two compete a little on the set. Is that true? Well, we sort of do, we kind of do anti-competing, because the okay. way it works in Sh the world of Shonda Rhimes is she has a rule that when there are love scenes, women can wear what they want and the men have to take off their clothes when yeah. Shonda tells them to. So, it's about time. Scott and I, more it's like when we do our table reads where we all read the scripts out loud together, you turn the page and you'll read Fitz takes his shirt off and Scott's like, you're up, dude. <laughs> so, um, you have two daughters in their 20s. How do they do. feel about the love scenes? They find it disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I literally got a text from my older daughter uh, after she watched the premiere, or she texted me going, five minutes into the premiere, lots of nudity, it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you supposedly don't know what's going to happen until the table read. You have no idea. We what... never have a clue. I don't believe you. No, I swear to God, we never know. But, you know, Shonda doesn't tell us because they decide at the last minute sometimes, the writers, and they rewrite right up to the final you know, right before we start shooting, and then we all sit down and read them together. Really? What are you, what are we looking at? I'm just at? looking at your eyes. I hear that you like whiskey. I, I do like whiskey. If I liquored you up, would do you tell us a little bit? I think we have some whiskey. I think we might be able to arrange something. Oh. Wait, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's afternoon, late afternoon, summer. Do you like it with ice or neat? Uh, I'm, I typically, a uh, neat would be neat. fine. Is that neat? Wow. <laughs> all right, so do I have to, dr I have to drink all of this? You have to take a little sip and then just tell me something. Just something. Give us something. That's a real deal. This is real. Yes. I literally was as a joke about to drink the whole thing. That would have... Um... Could you drink the whole thing? Uh, no, I would not. Not okay. and live to tell the story. Right. So tell me something. Nothing. Tell you something. I just Marathon. gave you liquor. Okay. <laughs> something. Um, Even just a, like a hint. Here's the thing. Okay. Audience have, for four years have been wondering how can Fitz and Olivia ever be together? And right. some in the audience have been longing for that to happen. And now you're going to get to see what that looks like. And so, which is Are we going to be disappointed? Is fantastic. it going to be upsetting or is it going to be great? Well, so far, it's from what I know, and I, as Isha, I know very, yeah. I don't know much more than the audience, it's both. As one of our characters, Abby, put it in last week's episode, talking to me, the typhoon that hits when the president and his mistress go public, it's pretty insane. So um, it, it does not make life easy or pretty for Fitz and Olivia, and it's a lot of pressure, but it's also really exciting and sexy, and um, it, it's crazy. And yeah, it's, it's it, scandalous. We haven't quite seen it before. You know what? It's, the show is so great and looks like it's a lot of fun to be part of it. It's also groundbreaking. It because is, Karen Washington, right. what, it's been more than 40 years since a woman of color played a lead exactly role right. in a drama. Get Christy Love. Right. So right. you really are trailblazers mm -hmm. as a show. Yeah, and look what's happening now. So Carrie, you know, a few years ago was the first woman of color. Now Viola Davis wins the Emmy. Something you didn't first think was going to happen. Ever. I think you had a, a piece in The Hollywood Reporter bemoaning the fact that no woman of color. Well, yeah, I wrote a piece in The Hollywood yeah. Reporter about diversity. And, you know, my point was is that there's a study that had come out saying that the networks and the, and the studios were not making a big enough effort. And I said, that's true, but it really is up to the creators, the writers yeah. and the producers and those of us who create television and movies to write the parts for, you know, women and women of color. And um, 
and to hire you know female directors and female directors of color really is that so yeah. but one of the things I said and I said as of yet a woman of color has yet to win an Emmy for best actress and and then Viola now, did check that it one exactly off. which Viola was so did. great and her speech was fabulous too was really yeah. it was another call to action yeah right you have been around this industry your entire life I didn't realize that your grandfather was the founder of Goldwyn Pictures the G That's and MGM right. and the G and MGM so Samuel what, I know yeah. I didn't it makes total sense I don't know why I didn't put the two and two, two, and two together mm -hmm. but what was your childhood like well you know it was funny because my, my parents really didn't want us to grow up as Hollywood brats yeah um, so I never knew any movie stars. We were really kept kind of sheltered from the movie business. I, I used to go and spend Saturdays with my dad over at my grandparents' house. And we'd go and I'd spend the day with them and I was real close to my grandfather. And one Saturday, and I'd go in my shorts, like tennis shorts, and, and we'd go over there and my dad is all dressed up. And I said, what? He said, oh, your grandfather's getting an award. And my dad was so nervous, he did, wouldn't tell me what was going on. <laughs> anyway, about 15 minutes later, President Nixon oh, pulls up the driveway, this huge motorcade oh. of Secret Service, oh, and here's a picture yeah. of it. Yeah. So my grandfather got awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Wow. Which is the highest civilian honor that someone can get. So, did you say anything about your outfit? So that's <laughs> me. No, that's me in, like, my little tennis outfit wow. at 10 years old. And that's Richard Nixon. And then, look, I love that picture because I'm holding my grandpa's hand, if you can Aww. see. And he was sitting in a wheelchair and, um, yeah. Did so. he get to see any of your success? Okay. No, um, he didn't. I mean, I was 14 when he died, yeah. so, but he's looking down on I'm me. I'm sure he's looking know. down at you. Yeah. It's such a pleasure to have you here, Tony. Oh, really. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Continue great success. Thank you so much. Candle airs Thursday nights on ABC. We'll be right back.